Mm. Good morning. It is the first day of the biannual bibliothon. I have woken up. I'm about to go and have a quick shower and get ready because I'm going out for breakfast, which is going to be nice. And then I need to do some reading today because it's a readathon. So let's see how today goes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's seven o'clock. It's so much later than I thought it was. So, breakfast this morning. Then I came home and did some filming for my challenge for, what is it, the bookish Etsy shop challenge for the Buy New Bibliothon, and I'm painting the edges of my copy of Nevernight. So I did that today, and it's turned out pretty good. Like, it's not amazing or anything, but I'm pretty happy with it. While I was doing that, I started listening to the audiobook for The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I think I've listened to about an hour and a half of that. After that, I got on FaceTime with my friend. We both had a little bit of free time today, and I read some more of Muse of Nightmares. So we got through 50 pages today, which is very cool. We're making slow progress, but I'm also really enjoying it. And I think overall we're around 200 pages into it, so almost halfway. Then I proceeded to waste a couple of hours just watching YouTube videos. Not very productive at all, but I'm settling in finally. And I'm going to start reading some of The Wicked Deep by Shaya Earnshaw. This one isn't a huge book either, so I think this is probably the perfect book to really kickstart my reading for this week. So I'm going to jump into that. And I think I might also put on one of those ASMR ambient videos just to get some nice ambient sound going while I'm reading and really get me in the mood. I really want one with a fireplace, so I think I might do the... Sherlock Holmes 221B Baker Street one because I really like that one. Ooh, okay, I'm getting excited. Let's do that. So this is the one that I like to look at. It's the uh, ASMR rooms one. They have a whole bunch of different types, like the Harry Potter common room ones. There's uh, like Fantastic Beasts ones. I think there's a Game of Thrones one as well. But yeah, they've got quite a few and I really enjoy the ones that they put up. So let's get in the mood. Why don't we? Let's do this. quick break. I've been in my jeans all day and I cannot bear it any longer. Now this is what I'm looking for. It is now midnight. I didn't read too much of this. I'm struggling to get into it a little bit. I probably will fall asleep really soon. Um, so I'm just going to read for a little bit and see how I go. You know when you lie on your side and one of your eyes just starts leaking? Why? Very boring minutes later. often when I'm reading a book if it describes someone's facial expression I will mimic it 
unconsciously. I don't mean to do it, it just kind of happens. I find it more often when there's descriptions of facial expressions in conversations with a lot of dialogue around it. Yeah, I find that I just mimic it without meaning to. <laughs> so with this one, it was like his eyebrows screw into a confused line. I've made it through just over 100 pages of The Wicked Deep and I'm struggling. The writing is a bit iffy for me and I have a lot of questions. Interesting concept, but I'm not sure if I'm interested enough in it to really want to continue. I am currently hosting some reading sprints over on the Buy New Bibliothon Twitter account though. Currently in the middle of one and I was like yeah I'll use like the reading sprints to really jump into the Wicked Deep and hopefully get some progress done with this. And I just it's it's really not holding my attention so I don't know I don't know what to do. As for The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo I am a little under eight hours into it at the moment which I think is pretty good. So I'm making good progress on that. There's like four hours to go so should be finished with that one the next day or two. I'm really really loving Seven Husbands though. Really liking it so far. <laughs> not into it <laughs> and like you know when you just don't connect to the characters and so you don't connect to anything that they do or any of the relationships they have with other people though I think that part of that is also because I don't think the relationships the main character has with other people are fleshed out very much at this point I really don't care I just don't care contemplating putting it down but I'm gonna give it another 50 pages and see how I'm doing seeing if the mystery really amps up and gets suspenseful if not I'm gonna put it down at least temporarily. Panning shot. <laughs> I'm reading. I'm doing lots of reading. This is riveting. Gravity. What is gravity? I'm trying so hard not to cry on the bus and now I'm walking to the gym and I'm just <sighs> not dealing very well. I wasn't expecting to get this emotion. My SD card filled up, then my camera battery died and Alex got here all within the span of like 30 seconds. So I've got six minutes left of listening to Evelyn Hugo so I'm just going to quickly finish the rest of it while Alex sorts himself out and settles in because I'm so close to the end. <laughs> the actress. I finished. It was an intense like last two hours that I was listening to it on the bus. Trying not to cry. Yeah. <laughs> I was standing at the front of the bus so like I could just look at look out the window and people didn't see me tearing up. I'm too sad to eat. Good morning, another work day. Just running off to the bus stop today and I've decided to start reading Fire by Kristen Kishaw. I'm kind of struggling with The Wicked Deep. I'm not really loving it and I think that's stopping me from making much progress in like the physical book department. The only book I've finished so far is an audiobook. So I'm going to start reading Fire today on the bus, put The Wicked Deep on hold. Maybe I'll read it towards the end of the readathon if I'm like wanting to get another book finished because I'm over halfway through. I can do it, but I just don't want to.
Today, whilst I was at work, I finished listening to the audiobook for Percy Jackson, uh, The Battle of the Labyrinth. To be honest, I wasn't super invested in it, but it's a series that I do want to complete. After that, I decided to start listening to Mem by Bethany C. Morrow. My most recent book package to arrive was a purchase from Book Depository, and that included The Book of M, which I've already read, Radio Silence, and mem so i was like hey i can get the audiobook i will read listen to this one and i can use this for the challenge to read the last book you bought slash acquired originally i was hoping to go to the library and pick up a book but i haven't had the chance to do any of that this week and i won't have time to do so during the remainder of the readathon it's it's a pretty a pretty small book. The audiobook is like five hours long, so I should be able to finish that in the next day or so. And I've been doing other reading too. So as I mentioned, I put down Wicked Deep briefly because struggling. So I've picked up Fire. I'm 97 pages through this so far. I am really, really enjoying it. I wasn't quite expecting to love it as much, but just because it's been so long since I've read Graceling, and I know it's a companion story to Graceling, uh, so it's been a while since I've been in the world at the very least. Tonight, I'm going to continue reading some of the Wicked Deep. I'm hoping to either participate in a couple of reading sprints or I will host a couple of my own because I just, I really want to finish the Wicked Deep. So I'm just going to try and power through it. Also this evening, I would like to try a chapter on the three books that I've set aside uh, for this. So I've got When Dimple Met Rishi, History is All You Left Me and Off Fire and Stars. Just because the next two days I'm not going to have much time to like sit down in my own room and do this kind of thing. Tomorrow night I'm going to be packing for my weekend away and then driving to Alex's because he lives closer to the airport than I do. And then after work on Friday I'm going straight to the airport because I'm going to Byron Bay for Splendor in the Grass over the weekend. Busy, busy, busy. I've got lots to do so I'm going to try and smash out a few things this evening. <laughs> So chapter one of Dimple Met Rishi was seven pages long. She's definitely got a really strong voice, even from page one, which I really like. And I'm very curious about what's going to happen next. It's a really short chapter, so it's kind of just giving you like a little bit of a taste of what to expect, but not enough to kind of get me really invested and desperate to know more just yet. On to the next book. History is All You Left Me is separated into little chapters, I guess. There's like today and then going back in the past. The first segment or chapter, whatever you want to call it, is two pages long. So I'm going to read that. And if I feel like that's not enough, I will then read the next segment, which is 13 pages long. So 15 in total. <laughs> I'm at the end of this first chapter. Okay, so am I emotionally ready to read an Adam Silvera book? That is the question. I think that was a pretty powerful first chapter, even being two pages. Do I need to continue on? You know what? I probably don't, but I'm going to read the second one anyway because I'm doing a readathon and um, nothing wrong with upping my page count by 13 more pages. You know, let's, let's just do it. <laughs> If anyone who hasn't read Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, this book will spoil you on page nine. <laughs> Aww. That was sweet, but I also fucking know what's gonna happen because it's in the synopsis of the book, so... <laughs> I didn't realise that History Is All You Left Me would have flashbacks, so you actually get to see the relationship that... Wade has with his ex. Oh no, my poor heart. <laughs> Book three. Ooh, a map. Do I count the prologue as an optional or do that as chapter one? No, I'm going to go like as chapter one is the first chapter because the prologue is also like four pages. It's not super long. I'm gonna take a nap right here. Okay, see you soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Sir, I thought you said this was my case. I gave you two weeks. I don't know. You guys, this is not my fault. I just finished reading The Wicked Deep. I wanted to love it. Like, the concept is really cool, but so many things made me angry. Oh, that's disappointing. Okay, by the way, <laughs> I still haven't finished reading chapter one of, of Fire and Stars. Um, I think there's still like, there's only like two pages left, but as you guys saw, I fell asleep earlier. Even though I haven't finished it, I have made a decision. So out of the three, the book that I am probably going to continue with is History Is All You Left Me. I'm currently reading Fire, which is a high fantasy, so I don't really want to pick up another high fantasy just so I don't get parts of each of those stories like blending together. I just want to avoid getting confused. So because of those reasons, and also because I really enjoyed what I read, I've decided to go with history is all you left me. So that's the next book on my list, uh, but I am tired. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to sleep. to make some progress on fire and also history is all you left me i was hoping to get like a fair amount of reading done on my car trip home but i got really tired and then decided to have a nap instead <laughs> but yeah i just packed up all my stuff for my little holiday over the weekend and yeah going to alex is gonna have dinner i'm like in the middle of three different books and i've got just over one day left and there's no way in hell that i'm gonna finish all three of those pretty happy with how i'm doing so far not as good as i expected but that's all right i got some reading done and i have finished three books so far which is still great but um yeah I was, I was keen to smash out like a bunch of books. It is the last day of the readathon. I'm just on my way to the train station now. I managed to find History Is All You Left Me on Scribed. So I decided to listen to some of that at the moment actually, just so I can make a bit of progress on that book. I'm making pretty good headway so far. Who knows, maybe I'll manage to finish it during work today. Today is the day, flying up to Byron Bay, which is fun. Just lugging all of my luggage with me to the train station this morning before I go to work. I'm really sad it's the last day of the readathon though. It's come to a close. It always goes just so quickly. flights to the Gold Coast to cancel tonight because of bad weather. You might be able to get on one tomorrow, but <laughs> good luck. <laughs> so we're driving to Byron Bay tonight. Woo! We'll probably get road there. Trip. Yeah. Overnight road trip. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. So, um, originally I had planned to do some reading on the plane, but that hasn't, that's not going to happen. I finished reading History Is All You Left Me, which was wonderful, and I've listened to a little bit more of Mem, and I've read a little bit more of Fire but that's going to be the rest of my reading for this week's one. But now back to driving. <laughs> Don't you leave me, then you go and cut me down. But wait, tell me that you're sorry, I didn't think I'd turn around. I say, yeah, it's too late to apologize. 